Right. Hey guys, it's Brian Bishop with The Verge here at CES, and I'm sitting down with the president and COO of Sony Electronics, Mike Fasulo. Mike, thanks for joining us this morning. My pleasure, Brian. Great to be here. Thanks so much. So uh, you had your press conference yesterday. I introduced a lot of cool products, including the new Walkman, which our readers are going insane for. It is gorgeous. It plays high-resolution audio. It also costs $1,200. Um, how are you going to get people you know, to buy into that? It's like a beautiful device, but it's expensive. It's obviously our pinnacle device. I mean, it's you know stainless steel. All the components are crafted particularly to optimize audio, so you know it is the, the pinnacle piece of the listening experience on the go. But we, we've got uh, the most broadest lineup of high-res audio in the industry. And I introduced quite a few products last night in high-res audio. So the, the key is um, we're delivering better sound for all applications of consumer use. Right, do you think consumers are ready for that? Because we we've been in an era where it's like MP3s and people don't kind of don't care. I think they're ready for it. I think they're confused by, you know, what does it mean? You know, the, the industry, you know, good, good news is uh, I announced last night that the Consumer Electronics Association will adopt with its members the high-res audio logo, mm -hmm. which um, was part of Sony's founding. Right. Um, so they'll adopt that across the industry. At least then consumers can see an indicator on products and know this is high-res audio or not. What we really need to do is educate folks on why high-res, why do I even care? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, music is such a lifelong passion that folks now, you know, they have large libraries, but they're interested in better quality sound, and now we can deliver it to them at affordable prices, at, you know, different applications on the go, in the home, wireless, multi-room, et cetera. Yeah, well, it's some beautiful devices. And, um, and also on the, on the visual front, you had some insanely thin TVs yesterday that were, that were beautiful, um, and also some interesting content deals. You mentioned that Netflix is going to be, you know, streaming um, HDR, high dynamic range, you know, 4K content to Sony TVs in 2015. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership? Yeah, so, I mean, last year, I, and I think on The Verge, I actually uh, discussed this, Last year, uh, we announced with, with Netflix the launch of streaming 4K. We were, we were the uh, world's largest delivery of 4K content, and uh, Netflix partnered with us very closely. So we're expanding that. We're, you know, we're still going to build upon the library and, and content delivery. But the two other areas that we're now moving towards is taking the pain points away from the consumer on how they receive the content being streamed, right? So you know, looking at bit rates of each home you know, is getting different broadband speeds mm -hmm. and looking at resolution coming in and making that seamless to the consumer so that, you know, when they click on their one click Sony remote and hit Netflix that what appears on the screen is living up to their expectation and high quality. So that partnership is, is really working out well. Our engineers and their engineers are working hand in hand um, and we're really excited about it. Sure, yeah, high dynamic range is one of those things I first saw um, true HDR content, you know, last year at CES, some manufacturers were showing it off, and it's probably the biggest, you know, most visceral jump in quality, most arresting change since the jump to HD. Do you think that's going to go and let, you know, Sony's TVs with 4K, with HDR, is going to be that push that's going to kind of, you know, get 4K into the mainstream? I would tell you 4K is in the mainstream now, M much pleasant surprise. Uh, we, we haven't seen an acceleration of an adoption of a new technology or even a TV platform like we're seeing in 4K, I can't remember since when. Mm -hmm. Clearly faster adoption than HD was. And uh, this year, you know, usually I get asked the question on estimation of how many units. No one can estimate because consumers are buying in such high demand. And I think it's because, um, I always say seeing is believing. So I think when customers go and get a demonstration and they actually see the difference in the picture quality, mm -hmm. in the skin tones, I mean, lifelike skin tones, reds are true reds, blues are true blues, and you know this leads to high dynamic range. And with, with our new products that I announced uh, last evening, the X900C, which um, frankly is thinner than our smartphone, Xperia smartphone. Right. It's point two, I guess it's inch, right? Because it's less than an inch. So <laughs> 0.2 inch, but it's got a, um, a processor in it that we call the X1. And what the mm -hmm. X1 does is it improves the picture quality of any source coming in. But it also looks at the colors. We, we also have a technology, and, and consumers, I don't want them to care about technology. Right. I want them to care about what does it do for me. So when you're looking at a color palette, you know it's very difficult in a TV to attract red, green, and blue equally. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, highlight one and another one diminishes. 
Um, but with our X1 processor and our clear luminous technology, we can actually look at trueness of color regardless of uh, which is coming in, red, green, blue, or any variation of it. It's really remarkable. And you can see it. The human eye yeah. can see the difference, and I always encourage consumers to go out and get a demonstration. Yeah, the demos have always been wonderful, but I think for people, when they get it to their home, obviously, about what they can actually watch at home. I think there were four streaming partners you mentioned yesterday um, on stage. Um, one was YouTube, one was Sony Zone, the other two were Amazon and Netflix. Is that enough content? Like, how much it's, it's taking a while. Obviously, Netflix rolled out Breaking Bad, which is like, you know, Sony Pictures, you know, television program. So Sony's, you know, working behind, I assume, to help, like, you know, put more 4K master content out there. Um, is that enough? Do we need, you need more providers out there that are offering 4K content to your TVs? I, I don't know if it's ever enough, you know, but there's choice. So, you know, today, anything you put on a Sony 4K Ultra HD is going to look better. Anything. Any broadcast, stream, playback, the best is download, right? So if, if, if you buy our server and downloaded comment, content, that's going to give you the best picture quality in native 4K. Sure. Uh, but anything is going to upscale to a better picture than wi without 4K. So there's no reason to wait. Right? The, the product automatically today makes your, your signal, makes your screen, be screen better. The industry has rallied. This is, this is going back to the adoption. You know, with HD, we didn't have um, adoption across all industries at the same time. You know, it was kind of um, chicken and the egg. Right. You know, content side, well, there's not enough of hardware installed, hardware side, no, there's not enough of content. We All verticals now are moving in 4K and ultra high definition, from the studios, from the producers, from the content companies, from new distribution platforms, whether it's streaming or otherwise, and clearly the manufacturers. So you're going to just see that perpetuate. You're going to see more and more content coming, more and more capability. But like I said, any content, high definition, Blu-ray, terrestrial looks better on a Sony 4K television. Yeah. Now how does HDR fit into that? Because that's, I mean, this, there's certain standards for that that are still being worked on, obviously, but you know, companies are basically, you know, things are getting mastered than that, content's being created, Netflix is obviously going to be showing it off. You know, are you worried people are going to see a difference between, you know, true HDR content and this regular 4K content when they're seen on their TVs? Well, I, I, I don't know if I'd make the comparison to regular 4K and true HDR, because what, what we try to do is present it to the consumer in the intention of the filmmaker, mm -hmm. in the creator, whether it's a filmmaker or, or a creator, right? And different producers, directors, creators have different, you know, filmmakers like film, but film has a grain to it, you know, naturally has a grain to it. So, you know, to this, we want to be able to display that like the filmmaker intended. I, you know, some consumers may say, well, there's a grain in it. Well, that was because the filmmaker intended there to be, to right. be one. So what, what, what we try to do is deliver the most natural picture quality that was intended by whatever the customer is watching. Internet content, you know, like I said, filmmaker content. So skin tones are one of the most difficult things to portray naturally on a screen. And uh, if you look at our skin tones, if you look at our lifelike color palette, um, I don't think you'll find, I know you won't find anything better. Gotcha. And how, are you expecting other of your streaming partners to adopt HDR in the year ahead, or is this going to be Netflix for 2015? I would, I would anticipate more. I mean, specifically, I can't tell you who, but I would anticipate we'd see more. Right. Yeah. And how many titles do you expect to see from Netflix uh, this year? We're not disclosing that as, as of yet, but uh, we'll have some titles. Go. It'll be fun. We got it. Will Breaking Bad be involved? I just asked because it's a favorite show. It was obviously, like I said, it's a Sony Pictures television show. It was one of the first shows uh, on Netflix in 4K. Is that, uh, is that going to be around the corner? Uh, we, we both enjoy Breaking Bad, Netflix and Sony. So. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, one other question I want to ask you on the TV front. Um, Android TV is a big part, obviously, the TV yes. series are running Android TV. Sony's had a history with Google TV that maybe didn't work out so great. Ahead of its time. Um, certainly. Um, but uh, was there any trepidation beforehand? You're like, oh, maybe we've been down this road, it's not so great, or you just, you know, what was the No, was no, the no trepidation at all. What, what, um, the, the good news with Google TV was, was Sony and Google were able to learn from a consumer application of what really matters mm -hmm. and I think um, the new venture that we're entering into together is working like Netflix hand in hand engineers with engineers on the consumer experience you know what matters to the consumer and what I loved about last evening's I loved a lot of things about last evening's announcements but um, we were able to show 
across multiple categories, across multiple screens, across multiple consumer products, mobily as well as in the home, simplicity and better quality with the Android platform. Mm -hmm. right? Whether it's in your smartphone, your smartwatch, on your television, now it's, it's seamless, which uh, no one else has done. So with Google and you know, Android platform and, and Sony, uh, we're, we're delivering more convenience and obviously better quality. Right, yeah, I gotta say, I love the Google Cast integration and I love the remote. The remote is just straight up badass. The one click so, is, is yeah. it's awesome, right? Is Content slick. bar. Yeah, yeah, I it, like it a lot. It's really nice. Well, cool. Well, this is a lot of exciting products. Thanks so much for taking the time. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to go look at some really awesome and super thin TVs right now. But thanks for joining us, guys.